important are transitions in video editing, how smart choices of transitions and cuts can make your videos more engaging, and what other types of transitions are there. You will find out if you watch this video till the very end, so let's roll. Hi, my name is Raman and you're watching the Mobile Vlog, and for this episode, I've prepared a list of 8 most essential video transitions every YouTube creator should know in 2024. Now, transitions play a very big role when it comes to keeping the interest of your audience and increasing audience retention. And I'm talking about a more pro level of understanding transitions as tools that you, as a YouTube creator, have a gotta use wisely. Transitions that don't just sit there but really help your videos become more interesting and add depth to your content. So let's get to it. And the first type of transition is a common hard cut when you take a frame from one scene, then a frame from the second scene and just join them with each other. But I don't advise you to just carelessly cut clips into parts and join different clips together. Always think about what you're showing to your viewer and don't make your audience bored with extra information that has nothing to do with the video. There must be always some kind of logic behind any simple cut, especially if you use a simple type of, of a cut like a hard cut. But don't underestimate the power of it. You definitely don't want to overwhelm your project with fancy transitions. So when you use proper Properly, the simple hard cut can create a great cinematic effect. Cutting on action is a transition from one frame to another at the moment of the action on the screen. It can be a head punch or strike, it can be a simple walk, it can be a dance. The main thing is to cut at the moment of some action. In terms of making it, it's just as simple as making a hard cut, but it serves different purposes. When you make transitions from statics to statics, it adds an extra moment, and in the end, it stretches the perception of that movement in time a little bit, making it less action-like. So use cutting on action when you want to make action scenes, it will keep the viewer more engaged. Now we're about to learn about more advanced types of transitions that require a bit more editing and tweaks, but still very very easy to do. Yet, hold on, there's a short announcement coming, stay tuned. Movavi Unlimited, I bet you heard of it, is the unique annual plan that includes the best from Movavi in one intuitive platform. There are tools for video editing like Movavi Video Editor Plus itself, photo retouching, screen recording apps, and a set of utilities for work and study. On top of this, Movavi Unlimited gives you the one-year access to all the effects that the Movavi Effects Store has to offer. You won't lose much time on learning every step of the creation process from converting raw footage to editing effects to a video project might be done in just a few clicks. Movavi Unlimited will help you create high quality content and make your ideas come true. And unlike professional software, Movavi Unlimited is accessible for many users. Its annual subscription plan includes 10 programs and a huge collection of effects at the price of just one app. And the best thing is that you won't need a top-of-the-line computer to make the platform run smoothly. So get 80% off our absolute bestseller Movavi Unlimited and to do that hit the link below to use our special deal. SFX Transitions Now my favorite types of transitions are coming. Let's take a look at so-called SFX Transitions. And what I mean by that is ready-made transition presets and actual special effects you can use as transitions featured in a video editing software of your choice, like Movavi Video Editor. This might seem like the easiest option possible when you don't know how to jump from one scene to another, you just add a transition preset from the library. But it's not. When used wisely, it can really be a professional tool and level up your videos. And we're gonna take a look at how it's done. Now take a close look at the enormous library of transitions Movavi Video Editor has to offer. Some of them would help to make a smooth transition in your project like blur in and blur out, slice movement and so on. Others in turn can add more action and dynamic to your video, like parallax, speed, fast zoom and zoom out. And 
and many many more. I especially like this glitch effect, glitch transition, also because you can set the duration of this and actually of any other transition. And this one would look cool both in slow and fast mode. As you can see, some transitions add special effects to the clip, but others use animation that covers the cut completely, like red or racing flag presets. You can find more of these types of transitions in the Movavi Effects Store. They are really something to see. And they can not only do the job of transitions, but also add a consistent style to your project. Speaking about Movavi Effects Store, do you want more advanced tips on using transition presets? I know you do. If you check out the latest effects in the Movavi Effects Store, don't miss the Overlay Effects category. They aren't exactly the transitions, they add overlay effects to Eclipse. But if you combine them with some simple transitions, that will be a blast. Just use your creativity, play around with different combinations and soon you will come up with the very cool transitions. And those would be unique transitions you made by yourself, not just presets. And that's not even all you can get from Movavi Video Editor in terms of transitions. There's a tiny tip you might like, you can actually use almost any distraction thing happening in the frame as a transition between two frames, especially when editing a vlog. So let's have an animated sticker as an example. Go to the stickers tab in Movavi Video Editor and try, let's say, this one, Mini Heart. When making a transition between two clips, you can simply leave it as a hard cut and add this animated sticker right in the center of the frame. So when it's best to make this cut? I think you got it already, exactly when there is an action in the animation. So in a way, it's similar to how we make cutting on action. Jump cut. Jump cut looks something like this. Of course, that was an exaggerated example, but on YouTube, vloggers use it way too often. And I understand why. Imagine you're talking about something for a very long time on camera. Obviously, there will be moments in the original footage that are better to cut out and you understand that on the editing stage. Select them and delete. So you end up covering pauses and mistakes behind the jump cut. And sometimes there's just too many of them. I advise you to try to hide jump cuts as much as possible. When there are any cutaways, it's better to put those cutaways on the jump cuts. It would look more professional. And we'll talk about the cutaways soon. There's a good tip. You can make a jump cut and crop the frame to create a sense of the second angle. That's much better than just a row of similar frame size jump cuts. Another option for a specific use of jump cuts is jumping through time. For instance, when a character in a video is sitting and thinking about something. In this example, you can use jump cuts to delete the moves of the actor so it feels like he's been sitting there for a very long time. J-cut. Next in the line is the J-cuts. They're called so because of the shape of the English letter J, which basically draws the shape of that transition as it looks on the timeline in the video editing software. You've definitely seen this type of transition in movies. It's when the next frame's audio track starts a little bit earlier than it's supposed to be and goes beyond the first frame's video clip. Note that this isn't some kind of super fancy Hollywood cut. It's simple in its design, but how natural and seamless it looks. It's very easy to make a J-cut. You need to expand the audio clip of the next clip under the first clip for just a few seconds. It's a good way to immerse the audience in what's happening and give them a little bit of a hint of what's about to happen on the screen in the next moment. And that leads us to the next type of cut, L-cut. L-cuts are necessary for dialogue scenes. For example, you have two people talking to each other and there are certain moments when you need to take a little pause to show the viewers the person's reaction to what the first person says. So instead of using a simple hard cut after the end of the phrase and before the beginning of the next phrase of the second person, sometimes you need to show this first reaction of the second person to what the first person says to show the mood before for the second person's response. Sometimes it can be relevant when you're filming yourself. For example, you're shooting a vlog and you're constantly changing locations. In this case, you can make an L-cut 
when you switch from one location to another, it will look very seamless and engaging. Cutaways. You probably know what cutaways are. Basically, they are extra shots of something and they cover up the main action or subject in the frame. But I want to go a little deeper into the meaning of cutaways and why to use them. So you won't use cutaways just because you can or just put some random footage to upper tracks to hide a long shot. So what could be the point of the cutaways? Imagine that you have a transition from one scene where two people are talking to each other to another scene where some other characters are already going somewhere. And instead of roughly cutting from the close-up of some person from the first scene to the action of other characters going somewhere, you can go for a more creative solution. Instead, you can start the second scene with showing the environment where these characters are traveling even before revealing the characters. This will give the viewer a better idea of where these characters are and how they can interact with with that place. This would give a deeper dive into the story and its context. Also, you can end the scene in about the same way. Imagine there is a character that shoots at something, something specific, and when you don't want to show that specific shot, you can switch to a wide shot showing birds flying away, and then the viewer hear the sound of that shot in the background. So we see not just the particular shot itself, but how the shot affects the environment of this scene and how it feels being there close to the shooter. It's a deeper dive into what's happening on the screen. Besides, it just looks more interesting. When we see a close-up of a person and then we see a wide shot, it looks more cinematic. So I recommend you to shoot as many different cutaways as possible and on the editing stage, watch how these cutaways can add more context to your story, to your video. Fade in, fade out and crossfade. Now this is Hollywood classics. As a rule, this method is implemented by changing the picture to a dark screen or appearance from a black screen or crossfading to frames. It's believed that in one movie one should use no more than four such transitions unless, of course, you break the rule on purpose. Fade-ins and fade-outs do a great job when you need to separate specific scenes. You can also use it in a different way, for example, to start and finish the video. It will look simple but stylish. You've probably already realized that you don't necessarily have to use any fancy transitions and cuts all the time to surprise your audience. The main thing is to think about what you're trying to say to your viewers when you use a certain type of transition and how appropriate a certain cut would look in a particular scene. If, however, you still need additional visual transitions with cool graphics and animation, then in Movavi Video Editor you'll find a lot of options. And in the Movavi Effects Store there are even more stylish transitions. You will find a link to the program in the description. Well, of course you know it. And that's it for today. Thank you for watching. My name is Roman and as always, I will see you very soon. Bye.